Start of home ownership community. How's everyone doing? Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's week is going well. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed the uh, Barry Habib and Dan Rawich uh, session from last week. If you did not get a chance to uh, <clears throat> to attend that session or to watch that session, I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, Val, is it still active? Can they go watch it or do they need to go through the e-learning platform? Do you know how we would how they would activate it? Yeah, it should still be on the Art of Home Ownership Facebook page, but it's also on YouTube. So I'll send a link in the chat here too. Got it. Yeah, guys, there was a, a ton that I took away from that. There was a lot that I shared with my our real estate partners, our CPAs, financial planners. Uh, there was great information to share with a lot of the, you know, the ranch managers and loan officers we have in our group. And I think that it was really helpful from a content perspective to be able to talk to clients about. So uh, if you haven't got a chance to go through that, watch that video. We've got a ton of great feedback from it. And I was um, very happy that we were able to, to do that, not just for us, but for the entire mortgage and real estate community, because I think we all uh, got a chance to learn a lot from it and get takeaways from people who have studied this thing and, and know it well. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy that. And if you hadn't had a chance to <clears throat> you know, give yourself a treat and uh, treat yourself to an hour. All right. So this week we wanted to really kind of highlight our home concierge service. Uh, this is a service that, you know, we, I, I've personally been working with House Happy and the home concierge team for about two and a half years now, <clears throat> maybe almost three. And you know, I, I initially came across the service. I was, um, I was actually hired by a credit union to go do a, a, a talk at, at one of their annual events. And, you know, I, they wanted me to come talk about mindset and value proposition. So it was interesting because I, you know, I walked into the room and there was maybe 50 or so people from this credit union, I'll, I'll leave, the, leave the name out. Um, and they were all, you know, kind of, I was listening to them before I was, I was on and they were talking about a lot of their challenges and their struggles and, you know, that, you know, they had interest rate problems and, you know, their clients were finding better interest rates. And, and I know the credit union, they have really, really good interest rates, right? They're, they're hyper, hyper competitive. This goes to show you that nobody can ever be the cheapest. So anyways, I was, you know, kind of in the back talking to the, one of the vice presidents who had, who had asked me to come speak. And I said, well, what is your guys' value proposition? Just before I get up there and start talking about kind of what we do and then how we do this. And he goes, you know, we just, we kind of lean on the, the fact that we're a credit union and they're already a member of ours. So we kind of know them, we have their bank statements. And I'm like, oh, that's, I'm just, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, that's kind of sad. Um, <clears throat> and he goes, well, we also have this, you know, this program where, you know, that there's like a home concierge or like a, 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 a service where, you know, someone will actually come to their home or, you know, in some markets or some markets they won't, but, you know, we can, document all the stuff in their home and they, if they need upgrades or renovations or repairs. And I, he was talking about it. And I'm like, huh, sounds really interesting. Glad I didn't know about it at the time. And so he goes, yeah, but you know, nobody ever talks about it. Nobody ever uses it. So it's just, you know, we just kind of throw it in there. <clears throat> and so that led me to, and I'm like, can you just send me the info on that? I'd, I'd love to check it out. And that, you know, I saw it and immediately clicked and I'm like, okay, we can add more value. And this is pre art of home ownership. So you know, as we, as we got to know House Happy more and more, we got to understand how it works and, and how to talk more about it. So I want everybody to understand every loan officer in America, even the ones with the lowest rates, like credit unions, they all have challenges discerning their value. Um, I was at a, a uh, this morning, I was pitching to a group of realtors that we just started working with. There's about 15 of them in the room. And I talked about the service. I'll, I'll bring it up here in a second. But one of the things I can tell you is nobody is trying to help clients in the way that we are. And as soon as the client understands why we're trying to do this and how it will impact them, then they become open to it. However, if you don't, if you don't talk about it, if you don't understand it, if you don't get them to understand how important it can be to them, then it's just going to be yet another thing that is there that nobody really uses or talks about, which unfortunately happens all the time in the mortgage industry. I mean, you can talk to almost anyone who runs a company in the mortgage industry, and there's a ton of people who sign up for things, but very few people who actually use them because they don't see any sort of results. And it's because it's not really implemented into their, into their platform. So I want to challenge everyone today to 
not only you know, make sure you're incorporating art of home ownership into your initial phone call, your consultations, your contract meetings, and your post-closing calls as a whole, but in specific, the, the concierge aspect of it. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen here. Assuming this works. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so the first strategy, tactic, and script we want to talk about today is how to use case studies to encourage clients to use art of home services and get more buy-in. Um, before, as I was getting ready this morning, I was listening to uh, one of Don, Donald Miller podcasts about how to price your services. And one of the things they were talking about is that most people, when they, when they price something, they, the client doesn't know why or the value in it. And they don't do a good enough job helping them understand it. So he says, you know, obviously Donald Miller's brand is story brand. So obviously he says, don't just tell the client what it does, tell the client's stories of what it does because then they can relate to it. So we've used, you know, on our team, we have multiple instances of how we use the concierge, or how we use art of home ownership in general, but specifically the concierge. So, you know, I use a personal experience. I said, you know, my wife calls me one day and, and says the refrigerator ran out. And I said, okay, well, do you know what to do? She says, no. And I said, do you know who to call? She says, no. I said, isn't there some sort of phone number or like something in the fridge? I thought I saw that somewhere. She goes, I think there is. So she checks, she calls the phone number. It's, she's not getting through to anybody. There's no, nobody answering that phone. And so we're like, well, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. We have the home concierge. Like, they can help with this. And so, you know, I go on my phone, I click the button. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of refrigerator I have. I don't know who, call, who goes and fixes that, but they do right? Because they have the information. So, you know, click the button. They said it's going to cost about this much to send somebody out. It's going to cost this much to, you know, <clears throat> get the repair done. I said, great, send them. Somebody came out, did the work. Now we got the receipt in their system. We got that vendor's contact information. So if it ever goes out again, we know who to call. And we know if, you know, if it goes out two months later, he's going to come out again and do it for free. Now, the average person's not going to have that. Now, could I have figured out how to do it? Sure, it would have cost me a lot of time, a lot of money. I probably would have you know, not figured it out. And then I wouldn't have kept the receipt, let's be honest. It would have gone into a drawer somewhere. And then if something happened again, I would have known who to call. I wouldn't have kept his information. So it's gonna help substantially in small situations and then in large situations. For example, we needed a whole new painting process done. They got us two different bids. You know, they sent out the painters. The painters were there for three days. They did an incredible job. Uh, you know, all the payment was done through the system. It was super easy. All the receipts are in there, all the vendor contact information's in there. <clears throat> and then on a weekly basis, I get information about how to look after my home. So when you're talking to clients, <clears throat> again, specifically about the concierge platform, not necessarily art of homeownership as a whole, use instances, you know, use it yourself, use, you know, talk about how your clients have used it. You guys should be getting emails from your clients that are, you know, hey, your client just used, you know, your concierge service for X, Y, Z, right? And then you should be getting reviews and feedback and scoring on it. So talk about those things and talk about future case scenarios. Remember, I don't know if it was last time, I think it was two weeks ago, we talked about elongating or stretching out someone's time horizon. Because when, when they're in the home buying mode or home refinancing mode, they're only thinking about right now. Right, like these 30 days, this is what I'm looking at, start to end a transaction. But they need to understand that the real wins or losses in their life are going to come when you expand the time horizon over 30 plus years. And that's not something that most real estate or mortgage professionals do. They actually zero in the time horizon, which is a challenge. So help your clients expand that and then show them, hey, you may not realize this, but two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, you're going to need to do some work on that house, right? Even if it's a brand new home, some things are going to happen, right? That's, that's the difference between renting a home and owning a home. If you rent one, you just call the landlord and they take care of it. But if you own it, it's on you. And this is when you go to your value proposition here. You know, our team is going to commit to proactively helping you keep your home in great shape and increasing that home's value over time. When I showed the realtor team that this morning, all 15 of them were like, how do you do that? And I said, it's interesting you thought that because no other.
Can you guys hear me now? All right. A lot of yeses. Uh, anyone want to tell me where you lost me? <laughs> um, I would say like a minute and a half ago. Oh, Do anyone remember the last thing I said? Real estate okay. team. We're talking about the real estate team. Okay. So I talked about it twice. So I'm not sure. But anyways, I was in front of the real estate team this morning and I said, you know, no real estate team or no lender has ever been able to make a commitment that they will help the client proactively keep their home in great shape and increase that home's value over the time because they can't. Like, how could you proactively help someone keep their home in great shape? Like, you don't live in that house. They do. They should proactively keep in great shape. And you can't increase that home's value over time. Now, the market might do that, but you couldn't functionally add to that in any way. <clears throat> so it's one thing to say that you're going to do these things. And sometimes clients, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but when a client hears you say something that they don't quite understand, 99% of the time, they're not going to stop you and say, hey, rewind. I didn't, how are you going to do that? Like, how are you going to help me keep my home in great shape and increase its value over time? They're just going to, okay, we'll let it go and they'll keep going. They'll totally forget about the fact that you even said it, especially if you're not showing it to them here on this platform. Like if you're not visually showing it to them. Let me move this one here. <clears throat> so make sure that you not only talk about it, show it to them and then explain it. Because this is an important concept, right? Someone's going to be in their house two years from now and something's going to happen and they're going to need to know what to do and do and how to do it. And that real estate team was blown away by the fact that they can now make that bold statement right alongside of us, knowing that, you know, we as their partner will be able to handle, you know, a, a, a big majority of it. <clears throat> um, let me go here. Messages. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys are getting the, the information from the, from your clients and from how happy about how your clients are using it. Um, when you see that a client has used it, use an opportunity to follow up, ask them, Hey, how'd it go? You know, what was your experience like? How did it help you? And then use that as your story. Uh, because we, we kind of talked about in this bullet point, you want to give them inspiration and allow them to leverage the tools to really maximize their potential. Like they need to know how that concierge is going to help them. They need to know how the monthly real estate wealth digest will make them a more successful homeowner and why they should pay attention to it every month when it comes out. More importantly, why they should engage with it, tell stories around it. Our clients that engage with that platform are oftentimes our more successful clients. Now, if you want to quantify that, you can, if you have, if you, if you track it that closely, or you could just make kind of a, a broader statement, like the people who click the buttons and ask us questions, they're being proactive, which allows us to be proactive right along with them. But the people who don't, who kind of just sit there and wonder, they miss opportunities, right? They, they don't take advantage of, uh, of the market when the market is helping them. So give that, give that inspiration and make sure that people understand for the next 30 years, it should be a very interactive relationship and they should use your tools on a consistent basis. Um, so, you know, we put in a kind of example here of send a closing gift along with printed information around the tools and tell them how you personally use the platform to your benefit. So, you know, when we send our closing gifts, you know, not only do we do our post-closing call, but our post-closing gifts go out. A lot of times they'll have different notes in them, different concepts around them. We do uh, cards like, you know, actual physical cards that are sent to the client uh, for five years after closing. It's got realtor's information, our information. Um, and the cards don't just say happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. It might say happy birthday, but it's also going to say, you know, make sure you're using your home concierge service. You know, so that way your home always stays in great shape, you know, that kind of thing. Or, you know, congratulations on being in your home for a year. Hopefully you've been getting a lot of, you know, value from art of home ownership. If not, you know, make sure to go here and get that information. Um, so always be driving them back to your value because you can't expect people to remember this, especially because they never were expecting it to begin with. So I want to make that clear. Like this is a, a an ongoing process that is important to continue to kind of, you know, anchor back to. 
Uh, we got someone in the chat here. <clears throat> Matt says, hey, Ryan, I saw a well-produced art of homeownership video that walks the client through the benefits of the concierge. What I'd like to do is know is I, is can AOH partners have the video available to them? Um, do we want to unmute Matt? I want to make sure I know what he's talking about. Or Val, do you know which one I'm talking, do you know what he's talking about here? No, let me unmute him just to make sure. Matt, you there? Right. Yeah, can you hey, hear me all right? Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> hey, yeah, so on the onset, I mean, we do a great job after we close and, and maybe even the, um, the call that we do when we close the transaction, but in the very beginning um, to you know, articulate what the offerings we do at pre-approval, et cetera, but there was a great video I saw that AOH put together, I don't know, it was on which site, maybe it's Facebook or so, and I was just hoping that the partners can have that video available to them so that we can incorporate that into our own CRMs on and maybe a drip system like, hey, here's one of the things that we offer. And then I can send out a video like you guys just put together. Does that make sense? Was it, a, was it an animated video, do you recall? Or was it of me talking about it? Um, I would like to say it was probably, it could have been animated. I'll have to double check. It was probably about a, a month ago I saw it. So everyone has this, uh, everyone will have this on your site. Um, and you can always use this video. Sorry, internet works here. Let me do this real fast. Sorry, I got to share it the right way. Share sound, optimize. There we go. Difficult is the hassle of home maintenance and repairs. For example, when was the last time you changed your air filter? And what size do you even need to order? When should you get your rain gutters cleaned? And when was the last time you had your air conditioner or heater service to prevent them from breaking? Is this one you're referring to or is it a different one? I actually think it was a different one. My apologies. And I, and I didn't mean to take you off track. I was going to just No, no, it. this is great. This is, this is why we're here. We, we love the interaction. So um, obviously this is the one you can use and send to people. Um, I will have the team check our, our library for everything we put out on social media uh, in regards to the concierge. And I know... Scott will be uh, Scott, who is with uh, House Happy, will be on here uh, in a couple minutes with us. Uh, I'm sure he's going to have a lot of content on the actual House Happy site that would be able to be helpful for you as well. So um, we'll find it for you, and we'll make sure to push everything out that we can. Sounds great. Thanks, sir. Yeah, happy to help. <clears throat> All right. So I guess this is a no no better time than uh, than ever. It's a good transition. So let's go ahead and bring in Scott. Scott is. Uh, He's been with House Happy for, I think, since inception. Uh, Scott, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and exactly what your title is there, kind of introduce yourself. I think uh, it'd be great for everybody to get to know you. Uh, I'm excited to do some Q&A, uh, have you talk about the platform, where it stands today, where it's headed, and uh, happy to have you on. Great. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. Um, yeah, so my name is Scott Fowser. I um, I am the Chief Revenue Officer for House Happy, and I'm actually the founder of the predecessor company uh, that was originally called Gruntworks, which was designed specifically to be that concierge element um, and ultimately developed into the technology platform that it is now after we, uh, we merged with House Happy. So um, I, I love the fact that, you know, you've incorporated this into really ultimately what we believed was the solution that needed to be um, developed into the space really to help people um, take care of their homes. And sort of my backstory is my last company, we owned about 2 million feet of investment properties. And the way that we looked at an asset every time that we purchased it was that we would do an inventory of what our asset looked like because it was, it was an investment. And the inventory of what the roof looked like, what the asphalt looked like, what the HVAC system was doing, you know, all the, all the DNA of that property had to be managed because if we're looking at this as an investment, what is that going to cost us over the hold period? And is there a smart way to make, you know, make expenditures so that at the end of the anticipated hold period that we're not hit with any surprises or that there's any big credits re you know, required at the end or that we just frankly maximized the rent that we can receive or the, or the multiplier that we can get when we sell the assets. So um, we wanted to provide that to the homeowner. And, and frankly, with all the things that you've packaged together with Art of Homeownership, it's, it's fantastic because it works perfectly in alignment with, with what we believe need to be done with the, with, with homes. Yeah. And not just with homes, I think with the human, I mean, sure. with, with the, it's, you know, in that same meeting that I was with agents this morning, 
I looked around the room. I always love, it was a new group we started working with and I always love seeing their faces when I challenge their existence. And I said, look, think about what we're doing here, right? Like you all are giving someone, if, if they're buying a primary residence, the largest liability of their life, not an asset unless it makes money. And most of them, I guess, weren't aware of that. Uh, secondly, is we then come behind and give them the largest debt, which is also a liability. So they have two massive liabilities. And then we just say, good luck. Hope you know what you're doing. Right. And for the next 30 plus years, that person has to you know, navigate their way through every aspect of real estate or finance, home maintenance, upkeep, like understanding, you know, it, it's a massive job being a homeowner and you can just own a home or you can become a successful homeowner. And now you can actually go to your clients and commit to helping them become a successful homeowner. And you just see they're like, it's like the light goes on. And one of the guys actually said to me, he says, well, what do you do if, if the client comes to you and says that they're going to use another agent? Like, do you tell us? And I say, well, it's a good, good question. First of all, we absolutely tell you, but what we do most importantly is we get the client to expand their purview of their time horizon because they're only thinking about the transaction in that moment, right? They're only thinking, hey, I have another agent who's willing to do it for 1% commission. This person is charging me 2.5% commission. I can save 1.5% if I go the cheap route. And I said, to be honest, why wouldn't they? And, and everyone's kind of like, this guy, you know, why are we working with a guy again? And I said, if, the, if all they get is the transaction, then why wouldn't they try and save money on it? But if you expand the time horizon and show them, and, I, and I'm able to say, his name is Matthew. I said, I said, you know, Mr. Client, by using Matthew and ourselves collectively, we're going to help make you a more successful homeowner over time. And here's how saving one and a half percent commission is not going to create wealth for you. It's not going to make you any more successful. It'll save you a little bit of money, but you'll probably lose or not have the ability to earn up to 10 times as much as that by not having all the things that Matthew and I will collaboratively do with you. If I have to work with another agent, we're only at 50% of that number. And he was just blown away. He's like, that's the best response to that question I've ever heard. Because most people just say, well, he's got good service and you need him and he's going to work hard. It's like the other guy could say that too, but yeah. he'll do it for 1%. So I think, you know, changing the dynamic of what we offer to people is the whole reason why we created Art of Homeownership. And, you know, that's why we're excited to, to partner with Scott and how's happy to do it. Scott, if you wouldn't mind, Help us understand the misconception around the necessity of that in-home visit, right? Because the in-home visits happen in some markets, but they don't happen in every market. Right. Uh, and just, you know, just so everyone here knows, they absolutely happen here in the Orange County market, but they rarely actually even ever happen, right? Like yeah. it's, we offer it to everybody. We talk to it, everybody about it, but very few clients actually take us up on it but they still use the service. So if you wouldn't mind helping us understand that just for different markets. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, it's clearly the sexiest part of what we offer because nobody else does it. It's literally, and when we talk to our strategic partners at a very high level, and, and I will say, you know, Ryan, you, you've, you've created a product that it was so far in, in front of the, you know, the biggest players you can imagine in the space, but now they're all looking at, at being the, having the relationship with the home as opposed to as it relates to their loan, as it relates to as a broker, as it relates to their insurance, as it's, it's about the home because that's at the center of their universe. Right? So everybody sees this as a huge value, the in-home visit, but the reality of it is customers, especially right now are still leery about having somebody come into their home. And even if they weren't leery, they don't quite understand, at least initially, why it's necessary. Not, not all of them. Some people go, oh, it's the coolest thing since sliced bread and can't wait to have it done. And that's about 10%. And then you'll get another 15% who will start to do it over time um, as, they, uh, as they need something or as they, they continue to get their service reminders and they go, oh, yeah, I need that done. Um, and then when they order a service and we could have simplified the fulfillment side of it by knowing their filter size, their, their appliance model numbers, their number of windows, the square feet of carpet, whatever it is, they go, oh, that makes sense. And so then they have the home visit done. And so it just takes some time. It's like, you know, first of all, as, as you said earlier, they weren't necessarily expecting this as a gift, right? And unless you've gotten them excited about why it's amazing and necessary and they should do it, they're gonna, they're gonna be on, they just bought a house 
or they're in the middle of stuff and it's everybody's busy, right? So it takes them time to trust the process, to use the service, to understand that, understand what we're not, which is, is as important as what we are, because what some people, not some people, almost everybody, when you're presented with an idea, a solution, something that's maybe similar, but different, you're like, oh, that's like whatever, right? That's like Angie's this, that's like Home Advisor, that's like whatever. And it's not, right? Because Home Advisor doesn't provide you with an advocate, right? They're not there if something goes sideways to be on your, you know, be, you know, on your behalf and fight and get this thing resolved. And I don't know if everybody knows this, but I mean, we've been doing this now for almost 10 years and we've only had two cases where we had track down insurance on the behalf of the homeowner to solve a problem. And out of the tens of thousands of jobs that we've fulfilled, two, that's pretty good. And, and that's when we earn that forever customer because they don't have that in any other capacity. So anyway, to get back to your question about the home visit, um, people use this the way they, they want to use it. That's why we engage with text, email, phone, chat, because people have different ways they want to want to deal with things. And they also have different ways they want to deal with things based on the product or the service that they're committing or that they're, they're needing to have done. So if somebody needs their gutters cleaned, push the button, get it done, right? If somebody wants to have their bathroom remodeled or their house painted, there's, there's, there's things that go into that process that require slash demand um, conversation. And it's not just high touch. It's not just high tech. It's this combination of, you know, there's the gamut of people, right? And they'll use it the way they want to use it. So you don't necessarily need the, the, the home visit up front, but um, we, we want to encourage it, but they don't, you know, not everybody's going to have it done, but it doesn't really change the amount that they use the product. Awesome. Thank you for that feedback. So a couple things you said there, one was get them excited about it, right? So telling them what it does, doesn't get them excited about it. Telling them why they should do it, that's what gets them excited about it. And that's storytelling. Another thing you said there was just, you know, push button, get rain gutters cleared. And I'm thinking through this and I'm like, I don't know if a lot of people even know that they need to clean their rain gutters. Right. You know, my dad did that job and he had me up on the ladder and I'm clearing, cleaning rain gutters with him. And I live in a place where you know, trees are over the house. And so I know it needs to happen, but my children won't know that it needs to happen because I'm not doing it now. Yeah. Right. So as, as society changes, people don't know they need to change their air filter. I can't tell you how many clients are like, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Right. Or that they need to do small remedial tasks or that the number one you know, cause of fires in a home is lint behind the dryer. Didn't know that either. Right. Got that email, checked behind the dryer, cleaned it out. So being proactive and helping people keep that home in great shape is, is one thing, but, you know, explaining the why they should do it and getting them to engage is quite another. Um, we have a question here from Mike. It says, if someone's been on the Art of Home Ownership platform for months, so Joe Homeowner, uh, but has still not done the initial full home visit, what is the best way to instruct them on what to do? Um, it, it, well, I mean, if you, if you just want to remind them of that, it's available to them. And again, go back to the why. Um, that's probably a great place to start because they, they can also do it anytime inside their app. Um, and we'll also periodically remind them through their service reminders to have that done. So let's talk about the app for a second. Um, you know, when, when they initially get signed up for our home ownership or when we, you know, when client closes the transaction or we input them into our system, our home ownership pushes the data over to house happy, house happy signs everybody up. Client gets a welcome to house happy email. Um, let's say they just get the email, but don't install the app. If we tell the client, Hey, if you want to use this, Go to the app store real quick, right? Can they just look up House Happy? And how do they, do they have a number somewhere? How can they get that information into their account? Well, so when they, when they accept their account, they're, so we call the app is actually, it's a web app or a WAP, right? So it's, we have a native app, which you can, you can use, but you can also just use it on your computer or access it on your phone. Um, so they don't need to download the app to make it to, to operate the, you know, okay. the service. Um, but they can totally do that. And it's just house happy on the, on the app store. Uh, it's on Android and Apple. And uh, they need like a code that, that they're in there or is their email no. and information going to be just fine because we've already, we've already signed them up. Correct. So it's already, they're already in there. So all they, once they, once they activate their account and they tie in with their email address, they'll, they'll have all the information in their app already. 
Got it. So for everybody watching this, um, you know, Mike asked the question, how can they do that? They can just go to howsappy.com. They can download the app. They can go to the web or version of the app. Just tell them to put an email that they used when working with you. Uh, they'll then have, you know, they'll be able to sign up. They'll be asked for prompted for password, I'm assuming, Scott. Yeah. Or to create if a password. If they've, if they've set one, if they haven't, they'll be asked to create one. Yep. And at that point, they can schedule the in-home visit on that website. Yep. Yeah. And then okay. when they get their welcome call, they'll also be encouraged to set that up as well. And who's getting the welcome call, Scott? Everyone who's a closed transaction is getting a welcome call? Yeah, so the welcome process is, so when we receive the information, we create the account, the homeowner and the, the originating loan officer will receive a notification that it's been delivered. Um, it's a great opportunity at that point to respond, either reply all, send out a bomb bomb, pick up the phone, whatever it is that you normally do um, to say, hey, Mary, I saw that the, your house happy gift got delivered today. Just want to make sure you saw it because sometimes it goes into spam, right? Uh, make sure you saw it. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. You're going to love this and be sure to use it. I will tell you to, to kind of digress a little bit. We have a client that's been using our product. She's a, she's a real successful loan, off, loan officer here in Oregon. And she's been, she's been on our platform for five plus years, maybe six. And she says it's the number one thing that differentiates her and what she does is she actually gives a bottle of champagne with each with each closing, and she punches a little hole in the in the in the in the house happy information, and she says, "Use this. It is going to make your homeownership experience so much better and your life easier." I've used it dozens of times, and I love it. Use it, and she basically just tells them to use this, and it says it tells them why, and love they that. do. She, she has, I think, eight hundred people in our platform, and she has forty two percent of them using our services. It's crazy. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. guys, it just, you know, I, I say this a lot. It doesn't matter what you say. A lot of times it just matters how you say it, right? So yeah. if you say it with that level of intentionality, uh, especially with that directness, it can be helpful. And for those of you who don't know, this is what your clients are going to get. So, you know, I have, I'll just move this over so you can see it. Here's all the, you know, just in a couple of days, here's all the clients that got house happy. So all of them get this email. This is what this email looks like, right? So it'll say, Ryan Grant got you a gift for your home uh, at the address, $50 account credit. Let's get started. You know, phone number, concierge. It's got my branding information. They can view the website and they can also download the app. So your clients are going to get that. And that would be a great time for you or your customer success manager, post-closing manager to reach out and just, hey, you know, I want to make sure you got this email. I want to make sure you're utilizing the platform. Uh, and anytime they log into it, it's going to have your information in there. They're going to see you. Uh, all the emails, they're going to come, you know, something like this. It says, you know, pros are booking up fast near 37 Oakview, right? So AC tune-up, pest control, blah, blah, blah. Again, co-branded. So just make sure your clients understand it. Make sure they're using it at a, at a high level. Um, let me see. We got another question here. Do you ever strategize this with a closing gift to have increased value to the client's perspective? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question. Um, to us, it is a part of the closing gift, right? It's a, first of all, it's a $50 discount or any service that they get from them. So that's a part of the closing gift. We also talk about it on our post-closing call as our, I want to call it a gift because a gift implies it just carries less weight than an investment, right? So when we do our post-closing calls, we say, we want you to know that we've invested into, you know, making you an art of home ownership member. And this is what that means. And the reason we make this investment is because we could go spend that money on billboards or you know, commercials or internet ads, but then we're just, you know, we're not actually helping you. We're just trying to help more people to give debt to, right? We're going to change that, that allocation of those, that revenue, and we're going to turn it into actually investing into helping you becoming a more successful homeowner. So I think calling it a gift might cheapen the art of homeownership service a touch, we actually do gifts like the cutting board and the, you know, all the stuff that we do post-closing. Um, but I think that it's important to uh, just have the conversation, you know, to Scott's point, you know, the, the, the girl in Oregon incorporates it with the gift, right? Puts a hole in it and, you know, attaches it to the bottle of champagne. So there's no wrong way to do it. Just as long as you're talking about the whole, you know, artful ownership platform and then each fundamental part of it. Uh, so Scott, is there a way for us? AOH members to be able to schedule the inspection on the client's behalf. Um, assuming you know the homeowner's schedule, probably. Yeah, that'd be challenging, Alberto. I I would 
probably coach against that a bit. Um, I mean, you, you could, right? You could say, look, you know, when would you like them to come? And then if they say, you know, Tuesday at four, then, but then you have to go to house happy and figure out, Hey, do you have someone available Tuesday at four? And then if they can't, then you have to go back to the client. It's just, you know, it's too much in between better to just get both of them on at the same time and say, when does it work for both parties? Um, so I would, I would just direct them to do that. Uh, I think that you're going to extend over your skis a bit. If you try to play middleman there, you could do it um, again, not saying you can't, but might not be highest and best use of your genius zone powers. Hey, Ryan, I didn't answer a question that you'd asked earlier about the welcome yeah. call who gets them. So everybody gets them. Oh, yeah. and just procedurally, what happens is they'll receive the welcome email. They receive they receive a couple. There's like a series of three to make sure that they're getting them and they're getting all the information about it. Because one might be just here's the gift. And then there's the $50 account credit. And there's another there's another piece of it. But then they the, you'll, they'll get one phone call. Um, well, they'll, they'll get a couple of phone calls unless they reach the person. Then they'll only get one. And it basically just is a is a hi. I'm calling to introduce myself. I'm part of your house happy concierge team. Want to make sure that you had received your gift. And if not, then we, we resend it. And, uh, and that's it. It's never salesy. It's always about if there's something we can do to help take something off your list. Um, is there anything you'd like us to add to your account? Would you like to schedule your home visit? So it's, it's all and answer any questions you might have. So it's all, it's another aspect of that experience when they come in and making sure that they know that, that they've received something of value from you and that um, we want to make sure they got it and then that they fully understand what's available to them and that we're always available to help them make their life easier. Awesome. And if they don't have a home visit in that market, is the concierge doing anything to help them like, uh, you know, update the, upload the appraisal, upload the uh, home, ins home inspection report, home warranty, anything like that? Yeah, so we we do encourage them to upload that type of information. We'll also have what we've we've just started. I don't know if any of you've seen it. We have this thing called Five Minute Fridays that's evolving now, which is you know getting into the data collection points where we you know several different ways that we collect the data, and one of those is this Five Minute Fridays thing where it's like, hey, go and take a picture of the the manufacturer's plate on your water heater, upload it to your account, and we'll add 500 reward points to your system. And so that that'll happen and then it builds over time. And, you know, you mentioned it before about your, your time horizon. It just, you don't need something every week at your house, right? You'll, you'll have things that you, you need to have done, or you'll be reminded about something that, oh gosh, I've been meaning to do that. Um, and then you'll use the pro you'll use the service. And then you might, you know, four years down the road, you'll go, oh my gosh, we have that happen all the time. I mean, people who got their accounts two, three years ago, all of a sudden use the platform and, Yep. Meaning they might have been they might have been using the service reminders as a DIY helper, but now they've got something that they don't, they don't take care of themselves and they need help with. So then that's that's where we come into play on the concierge side. But in the meantime, they've got all the technology and the data behind them. Yeah, that's great. So we have a question here uh, from Brent uh, asking for the states where the in-home visit is not offered. Is it still approximately 100 active clients slash accounts in that area in order to get someone to hire? And then if so, is that 100 active accounts from like the clients or is that 100 active, you know, mortgage professionals who are also house happy or art of home ownership partners? It's a it's 100 accounts per month because going back to that percentage who will actually engage in that, that first 60 to six months, um, we need to have, you know, somebody, it costs about five grand to set up somebody in a market. And so for us to keep somebody engaged and, you know, busy, um, we need about that number of active number of new customers per month in a market. Got it. So Brent, and it's just across everybody. It's not just art of homeownership. It's across everybody. Got it. Yeah. So Brent, just do a hundred loans a month and you're all good. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, we, we should be reaching that number really quickly just across art of homeownership, right? I mean, if we have 10 art of homeownership partners in the kind of, you know, Nashville, Tennessee market, and they each do 10 transactions a month, Right. Uh, and they're on the platform, then, you know, they can spin them up. So even all, all the more reason why you want to, you know, get some other people on the platform, either within your company or within your branch, uh, within your, even at other companies. Uh, again, don't see this as a competitor thing. I, I actively look for the best lenders in Orange County to put on this platform because I know that we don't compete against each other. Right. We compete against the push button, get mortgages of the world. We compete against the banks, the credit unions, the people that have no discerning educational process or value proposition. And I want 
to create a very clear differentiator between a value-based mortgage company and a non-value-based mortgage company. So if I have more people that are helping more families showing what value is, then we just take more market share. And I doubt any of you have anything more than even one or 2% market share in your market. Maybe some of you do, but it's definitely not 10, 15, 20%. So help people understand how this will help everybody by getting more people on the platform and then we can get in-home visits in that market. Um, Lori's asking a question about marketing collateral. So Lori, we have a lot of marketing collateral that we've used from, uh, from House Happy and kind of rebranded it as Art of Home Ownership Concierge so it fits within your platform. Uh, Valentine, if you want to push that out or you know, provide links to all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, obviously, Scott, if there's anything else that you or your team have come up with lately, uh, obviously, we'd love to have it send it over to us, you know, have your marketing team connect with ours, and we can uh, make sure to push that out to our partners as well. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Awesome. All right. So <clears throat> next question is, you know, if you don't see results or aren't leveraging part of the platform, uh, wait, no, sorry, wrong one. Um, So we kind of talked about mindset of house happy uh, and the value proposition to the homeowner, just really making homeownership easier. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how maybe prevention is more efficient and cost effective than replacement and how we can have that conversation with our clients? Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's, it's actually pretty simple. I mean, you get your teeth cleaned so you don't get cavities. You, you, know, you change oil in your car so it doesn't blow up. Um, it's, it's something that we apply in, in many aspects of our life. Um, we go to the doctor periodically to get physicals and checks so that we can catch problems before they happen. Um, one of the reasons that the insurance companies are so interested in what we're doing now is because, you know, when we know where a water heater is located in a house, the, the makeup of the water in an area, which they have all the data for, and um, when the water heater was installed, you can identify in a pretty easy, pretty easy basis what the potential risk is and potential damages could be for that thing to pop in an upstairs bedroom closet, right? So it's there's like some real issues um, that we can we can avoid through proper maintenance. Things like you know you talked about gutter cleaning. I don't know if most people understand why you need to clean your gutters. I mean, most people don't think about it until it's, you know there's a waterfall coming down over the side of your house. And you know the reason we direct water away from the foundation is because it you know expansive soils will create foundational issues if they have a basement it could leak into the basement if they have a crawl space it go in the in the crawl uh, in the crawl space and all that stuff costs a lot to fix and so doing some preventative maintenance stuff is just way smarter um, it, it goes back to you know the shopping center stuff that we used to talk about or that we talked about earlier it's way smarter to maintain your hvac unit than to replace it right it's just it's the reality one thing I do want to mention is, you know, you talk about this why behind behind this. One of the very basic starting points of this company was about anxiety that the homeowner felt. It was one of the very first identified things that we had as a problem that we were solving is, and you've all experienced it yourself as you order things. It's like, you know, you're going to get ripped off <laughs> in your head. Somebody's going to tell you a price that, you know, is higher than it should be, or that somebody's going to, you know, not treat you right. That may not be the case, but it's, it's, true. It's like taking your car to a shop. I mean, you don't know everything about that, what you need to know. So there's anxiety around it. And we are relieving that anxiety as part, part of the reason that you want to give this to somebody is just, again, life's stressful enough. Give yourself more time for the stuff that matters in your life, for your family, for your job, whatever it is that you find valuable and let somebody else take care of that anxiety and those problems, those 15 phone calls that it takes to get somebody to, to fix whatever you need at your house. Yeah, well said. Well, guys, let's open it up for some Q&A um, before we kind of end with mindset. Um, what questions do you guys have for Scott in regards to the concierge? What questions do you have for me in terms of how you can make sure your clients are incorporating it or you're you know, kind of working it into your initial conversations, post-closing calls, annual financial reviews? Anything we can help you guys with there? Feel free to raise your hand if you'd like. We can just unmute you. All right. Well, well, we got one. Let's see. Uh, Brent's asking, do we have a great explainer video we can send to clients on it? 
so yeah, Brent, I, I showed this earlier. Uh, I think we we asked this, but just go to your website here and you'll have this video here, right? Which is on your, your uh, sorry, let me open this up more. So go here to your home concierge video. Um, if you've done yours, it'll be there. And if not, then you just use this animated version of one. Uh, and then anything else that you know Scott has, he's gonna send to us and any other videos we've done, we'll send out to everybody. Uh, and I'll definitely incorporate them into your annual reviews, your three month calls, your six month calls, and just making sure that you know clients continue to see it. Repetition uh, in this helps quite a bit. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea either um, periodically to, you know, you've created the account, so you're not going to resend the URL for somebody to create their account, but basically, you know, re-engaging them on a quarterly or semi-annual basis about, you know, why, why they want to have somebody taking care of their home or make sure that they even saw it. Um, you know, we, if we, if we don't reach somebody after a couple of phone calls, we don't want to pester them. And so they may, it may have gone into spam. They may have just been too busy to respond to it. We, we want to make sure that they, they are utilizing this gift that you've given them. Um, but we also want, don't want to be pest, a pest about it. Um, we don't want to have a negative experience. So we, we, we walk that fine line. It sounds like you're muted. Yeah, Ryan. You're Got it. Okay. So, yeah, Laura's saying she talks about it on face to face too. Uh, get them excited about it and the fact that they'll get it. Yeah, I mean, every time we do a consultation, we pull it up and we'll show them the site. Um, <clears throat> I actually have my personal house on it that I'll show people. And I'll say, like, this is my house. Like, this is, you know, how I use it. You can see I've used painting services. And so it makes it more of a real thing when people see that, you know, the, the platform and how it's used and how they should use it. And the first time home buyers, one of the biggest regrets that first time home buyers have is underestimating the home maintenance, home upkeep. So one is, you know, putting too much money down or not saving enough money and not having enough in reserves. That's always the number one regret of a, of a home buyer. Number two, typically after that is underestimating or not being told how much it may cost to upkeep or keep a home in great shape. And so I'm not saying you want to play on fear because that's more of a sales tactic. You just want to explain that it, it, if they don't have it, it, it should, right? They should have a healthy understanding that when you own a home, you know, all the costs of that home and that upkeep and maintenance are on you. And so you don't want to be reactive in that, in that space. Like being a, a homeowner is one thing. Being a successful homeowner is another. A successful homeowner is going to be proactive with their maintenance. That way they don't have to be reactive with their repairs and fixes. And, you know, I can't tell you how much money you'll save by using this platform, which is just yet another reason how we're going to help you grow your generational wealth, save money at every turn, plan for future real estate goals, and ensure that your house actually grows in value over time as opposed to depreciates more rapidly because we're not doing the things we need to do to take, to take care of it. Scott, anything you want to finish with or leave us with today before we wrap up? Um, I think, you know, the, we continue to add more, um, we never, we, we never positioned this as being, you know, the, the place where you're going to find like discount services or the cheapest platform because our, our MO is really, we put the homeowner at the center of our bullseye. And one of the things that is very different about us versus literally everybody else in the home maintenance or repair space is they all sell leads, right? Their whole, their whole business is built around contractor revenue based on contractors and on selling the customer something, right? So one of the things that is really important for us is that, um, you know, they understand that, that we're really there for them and in their corner and that our entire universe is built around having a good user experience and providing value. So they may not have the cheapest person, although we, we do have very inexpensive pros at, at times, but they, they have one thing in common is that they all do good work. If they don't, we don't have a ratings and review system that is published. We keep, we keep track of everything that gets, gets, that gets done. And if they don't do a good job, they don't get three stars and they're, they're, they stick around and to get another three stars, they're, they're out. And so, you know, that's, that's part of our MO. And so what I, what I want to also say is that we do now get pretty substantial discounts that we pass on to customers and not in all geographies, not in all service categories, but like, you know, in 24 markets in the country, we have a $20 pest control service. 
that is, you know, it's a way for them to build relationship with that customer, but the homeowner gets $180 value for 20 bucks, right? So we're doing more of that. We've got, I think in your area, we've got um, uh, a Terminex deal that's about 30 or 40% under market. Um, we have all these great things that we continue to evolve into. And we, what we tell these pros is, look, what are you going to do for our customers? It's not about how much we can make off of them or any of this stuff. It's like, what can you do for our customers to continue to add value? And I think that's, it's something that I think is important to understand in that why message is, you know, we're just going to make things easier and save you some money, hopefully. Yeah, really well said. And I think that one of the, I'm glad you said that because one of the points of contention or feedback I get oftentimes is, well, you know, how do I know that I'm getting a good, like, you know, I've talked about those clients before and they say, how do I know I'm getting like a good you know, quote from the vendor? Like, if I, couldn't I go find vendors that are probably cheaper? And I said, yes, you absolutely could. You, you always can. I said, but I don't know about you. I just don't want the person fixing my roof to be the cheapest. And I say, well, I don't want the person giving me eye surgery to be the cheapest. I like you want, what you want is the most value for your dollar, right? You want that, that money to go the farthest. And so, you know, the, the hardest thing with contractors, which also Mr. Smith is why, I'm not referring you a contractor because I've tried referring contractors my whole career and half the time they're good, half the time they're bad. And I don't want to be half and half. I want, I would much rather, you know, have a, a, a company and a concierge service that handles all this for you, that if something does go wrong, they're secondarily insured, they'll step in and fix it, that they monitor and manage and oversee those people. And you can always go do this work on your own and find it on your own. But, you know, you could always use the service as well. And our clients are happy with it. So um, it's just another way of, of getting people to realize value over price and something that's you know, tangible and they, they should be using often. Yeah. Scott, yeah. it's been great, man. Thank, thank you for uh, thank you for being on here. You're welcome to stick around for the next uh, seven minutes while I talk about mindset if you want. Otherwise, uh, appreciate having you. Absolutely. Thank you. So, Tim, when you're thinking through the mortgage industry over the next you know, six months, if you've heard Barry and Dan, the expectation is that rates will likely rise you know, through the summer, you know, maybe towards the end of the year. And then we're, we may see a drop in 2022, 2023, you know, based on some recessionary fears. <clears throat> One of the biggest reasons we're seeing so many people join Art of Home Ownership now, mainly because they have time to do it in the way as they didn't last year, it's because the number one concern we're getting is that people are getting price shopped left and right. Right? It's becoming such a competitive market that mortgage professionals and real estate agents are losing deals to cheaper options. And they should. I said it. Right? Like, if you're not the cheapest and you don't provide any other substantive value other than customer service, they should choose the cheap option. And likely, not likely, guaranteed none of us on here are the cheapest because we don't work at a call center you know, for you know, a couple hundred dollars per loan application. And then it goes through this, you know, mechanized wheel and sometimes comes out the other end. <clears throat> so understand that you not only have to be a, a student of mortgage, but if you're an art of home ownership partner, you have to be a student of the platform itself. You have to help your clients understand why you, because you are the home concierge, you are the annual financial review, you're the monthly real estate wealth digest, you know, those things don't just exist in some vacuum, like you offer them, right, your service, your commitment to the client is what creates all those things. And we all know those things aren't free, we have to make investments in those. So understand how to explain it, feel confident explaining it. And as I said, I don't know how many times before, but if Art of Home Ownership didn't exist, I don't know how I would explain why me to a client anymore. If I had to go back and say, and I don't have these tools, I don't know why I would tell someone to use me. I would feel, I would have a fundamental problem telling someone to use me with a higher rate. I would have to go be the cheapest. And then I'd feel, feel okay. I'd never actually be the cheapest, but like I could try, I could get real close. So understand the results. And it, also, if you're not seeing the results, right? Or you're not leveraging the platform as much as you should put in the work. Jim Rohn says it really well. If you want to get paid more, become more valuable, right? Like if you want to, if you want to become more, increase your, your knowledge, like invest in yourself. 
you don't just sign up for art of home ownership and all of a sudden, you know, your value proposition goes through the roof and your, your results change. You're not gonna, you know, land a corporate account like Facebook because you can talk about just the home concierge. Like, and that did help get that account, but it wasn't the only reason, All right? Like you have to really dive in. So spend time in the e-learning platform. There's a reason we built that. The art of home ownership without the e-learning platform would be someone would be like giving someone a Ferrari with no gas. It's a cool thing to look at. It's awesome. It probably goes fast, but without gas, it's just going to sit there. So the e-learning platform is your gas. You need to take that in and then get in the Ferrari and go. And if anyone needs any training, if anyone needs any help or resources, that's why we do these every week. Um, I would much rather, and our team would much rather not have to come up with things that we think we want to train on or talk about, we should be hearing from you guys every week saying, I need to get better at this. I'm not good enough at this. My team needs to get better at that. You know, we need to understand this at a higher level. We need to figure out how we can implement this more effectively. And those should be our trainings every week. Because obviously I can't spend time with each one of you one-on-one -on -one as much as I would love to, but we can, you know, you can get one-on-one -on -one training here if you're the only one who asked the question. So don't feel like you're too busy to improve. As soon as you feel like you're too busy to improve, you're going to stop being too busy. Any questions, comments, or feedback? Um, let's see here. I think we are good. I'm reading through some of the comments here. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, Scott, thank you again for being here. Thank you for everybody who added in the into the chat and asked questions and provided. Uh, we may have something here. Uh, oh, yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, we'll give you guys two minutes back in your day. Go do something good with it. And we will see you all next week. Thanks, team. Bye, guys. Thank you.